How's everybody doing today? Just wanted to put out another video. Um, this one will be based on macro photography, just some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years and how you can get decent macro shots with everything from your kit lens all the way up to dedicated macro setup. First topic I want to cover is lighting. So for macro photography, a lot of it, if you're out during the day and you've got good lighting, you won't need any additional. You should just be able to focus, frame your shot, get it without the use of a flash or any additional lighting. But there are a lot of cases, especially if you're shooting wildflowers or anything in a wooded area where there's lots of shade, lots of cover, and you're not going to have the best lighting, that some of this gear will come in handy. So the first thing is your basic speed light that you can uh, put on any camera. Now I use all Canon gear like I've mentioned in other ones. So I'll be showing the Canon equipment I have, but all the other companies have something similar. So with these guys, a lot of them with the tilt heads like this, you're able to press the button on the side here and actually tilt it down a couple more degrees, which is going to give you a little bit closer full coverage. The other thing that I do for a lot of my macro shots is use the built-in filters right on them. So drop that filter in front and that's going to filter it. Just make it a little bit softer light for those close-up shots. So you're not going to have that overpowering really bright spot. You can use the bounce cards in them if your subject is far enough away. So you'd be able to mount this on your camera. like so and if you're shooting this would be if I was shooting straight at the lens here you would tilt it up like that and just diffuse the light a little bit more okay so it's gonna look just just like that okay now the other flashes that I have here I've got an old-school Vivitar macro flash 6000 autofocus C for Canon um, so this guy is your old lights it was I bought this probably a decade ago and it's just a straight up flash so you don't get any modeling lights you don't have as much control over it as you do some of the new ones there's really nothing other than your indexing on the back so you turn it on turn it off you've got a check button and a ready light so these will help you but you're probably gonna have to shoot in manual mode and adjust your lighting accordingly Okay, so a little bit more in depth for figuring out your settings, but still very usable. You can find these guys used Amazon um, photo websites for, you know, in the $30 or $40 range. The next one, which I already did a unboxing and first impression video of, is the new Aperture. So this is their LED ring light, the HC100. And I will link in this video the uh, unboxing and first impressions for this guy. And it's set up for Canon as well. You've got a 100 LED. You can also do modeling light as well as the flash. So you're able to, if you don't want the flash, you just need a little bit. You're able to adjust that from a quarter to full and be able to set it up just with the modeling light. Don't worry about the flash and take your shot that way. So very useful if you're using say the live view on your camera or you don't want to try to figure out or you don't know how to figure out the exact settings um, when using a flash that isn't ETTL censored. The other thing I tend to use a lot are little lights like this. So just a simple little push on off LED. You can put them under an object. So if you have an object here and you're taking a picture towards it, it's going to lighten up everything underneath. Sometimes it's a pretty strong light and the easiest fix for that is just putting a Kleenex or a tissue over top of it and it's going to soften it up quite a bit. So these guys are indispensable. I always keep one of these in my camera bag all the time. Uh, they're great for a highlight light as well. Um, lots of uses for them. So always keep one of these guys handy. Okay, the next thing I want to cover is cheaper ways of getting you to be able to focus as close as you'd like for macro photography. So there's a couple inexpensive ways and a couple more expensive ways. Just depends on what your budget is and how much you're going to use it. So the 
First inexpensive way are macro filters. So these guys are just gonna thread on the end of your lens. Um, you have to buy them according to the filter diameter of your lens or get a stepping ring if you've got multiple lenses and you still wanna use them. They're basically just magnifying glasses, okay? So you're gonna get some soft areas in your image, usually around the edges. So if you're cropping in anyways, they're a great inexpensive way to get you nice and close to your subjects. So normally these kits come in sets of three and they're gonna range anywhere from around the $50 mark to about $80, depending on what brand and what quality you wanna go for. Um, I use all Hoya ones. I haven't used these in quite some time because I've been using a dedicated macro lens or the next item that I'm gonna talk about, which is an extension tube. So all these guys do is they separate the distance from where your lens mounts to where your sensor is. So what that does is it's gonna minimize your focusing distance. So if your lens, especially a kit lens, says that it can focus you know, 1.2 meters, um, once you put this on, it's gonna cut it anywhere from a half to more of that. So you're gonna be able to focus quite close with the extension tubes. They come in varying ranges from lots of different companies. Um, Kenko sells them for pretty much every mount. So Canon, Nikon, Pentax, and so on. Um, every company that I know of has these dedicated to theirs as well. The nice thing about the using the actual dedicated ones from the company is it's gonna retain a lot of your lens features. So your auto exposure, autofocus and image stabilizer if you have an image stabilized lens. That's all going to transfer through the electronic pins in this and you're still able to utilize it, focus and meter exactly like you would without it. Okay, the next items that I want to cover for macro photography are a couple little add-ons. By no means do you need these items, but they have proven very helpful for me in the past. So the first thing with any macro photography, you're usually very close to a subject using higher focal lengths anywhere from 50 to 100 180 millimeters anything in that range movement is really going to show up and blur your photos so you've got to have a good way of stabilizing your camera and lens i use the pod quite a bit um, it's nice and handy for low shots or if you have something you can support it on it's basically just a bean bag that your camera goes on and it's going to form fit to whatever you set it on so nice and quick and easy. Good tripod is always an option. Just make sure if you're doing macro photography that it can drop down as low as you need it to. A lot of wildflower shots and close up stuff on the ground. You need that tripod to go almost flat. And I'll make sure I throw in uh, a link in the description of a couple tripods that I'd recommend that are able to do that. And I will have links for the rest of these products in the description as well. The next thing is a release cable. Goes on the same theory. Any shake of that camera is gonna show up and blur your images. So a good release cable that you can remote trigger your shutter without actually shaking or moving the camera. So this is gonna be most helpful, like I said, if you have everything set up on a tripod, your camera's stationary and your subject, subject is stationary. The next thing, a lot of people haven't seen these guys. This is a angle finder. See if I keep it in focus here. So this clips onto your viewfinder on the back and there's multiple adapters and there's a bunch of different companies that make these. This one is straight from Canon and it's the Angle Finder C. These are gonna help you in regards to ergonomics. So you're not gonna have to lay flat on the ground to look through your viewfinder if you don't have a variable angle LCD screen that you can do the live view through. And the other advantage is very, very precise focusing with these. They magnify it 1.25 times or 2.5 times what your lens is seeing. So what you see through this viewfinder is much closer than what your actual image is gonna be. So you've gotta keep that in mind as well. And these guys go on very easy. All you're gonna do is take the viewfinder I cup off and 
drop this guy right on it. And that's all there is to it. And then you can set your magnification on the side to one and a half or two times. You can also angle this in any direction you need to. So depending on your shot, you're going to be able to look straight down on this as opposed to having get right up close to that viewfinder laying on the ground is sometimes quite awkward doing. So those guys, I will see if they're still available. I purchased that one probably 10 or 15 years ago. Um, I will add a link in the description for that as well. And they aren't the cheapest thing. I think it was around the $200 mark, maybe a little bit more when I purchased it, but it's very, very helpful if you're doing a lot of macro work close to the ground. So for the shots that I'm gonna bring up in the video here, just to show you some of the setups that I'll be using for them. And like I said, I will annotate and list those on the images. So I'm going to shoot with my 100 millimeter standard macro from Canon. Um, this is the non USM. It has an aperture of 2.8. So this is their original one. They've since upgraded. They have a USM focusing one as well as their L series 2.8, which has image stabilizer built in. This one does not though. I'll be using the Aperture HC100 ring light for probably all of these shots, but I will take some without them just for comparison to show you the difference. I'm also going to use a standard kit lens that comes with a lot of the Canon cameras. So this is the 18 to 55, and this one does have image stabilizer, and I'm going to be adding the extension tube EF25 to this. I will also be adding the extension tube to a nifty 50, 50 millimeter f1.8 and see what the difference is between the two. So the 50 millimeter it's standard focusing is minimum focusing distance of 1.5 feet or 0.45 meters. Not sure if you can see it in there. The 18 to 55 kit lens has a minimum focusing distance of 0.8 feet or 0.25 meters. That's before, both of those are before the extension tube and we're gonna see how close we can get um, with the extension tube attached. And the Canon 100 millimeter F2.8 lists a minimum focusing distance of right around one foot. Or let me see what it says there. One foot is also 0.307 meters. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you got anything out of it. Check the description for links to the products that I've mentioned in here and shown. And have a good day and keep getting out there and getting some great photos. 